Number one has us matching each equation to its description, and we're talking about circles. So the general form of a circle is here, and it's x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Um, h and k are the x and the y coordinates of your center. So let's go ahead and look at writing these equations. So for this first one, we're going to be doing um, x minus 0. So x minus 0 squared will just be x squared. And then plus y minus, and it's minus a negative 4. So we're going to be doing minus negative 4 squared, which turns that to plus 4. And then equals the radius, which is 3 squared. And so then that 3 squared will be 9. So we just have x squared plus y plus 4 squared equals 9. So this um, equation goes with number 2. Next one um, is x minus the x coordinate. So x minus 1 squared. And then plus y minus the negative 4. So negative 4 will turn that to plus 4 squared and then equals the square root of three squared. And the square root of three squared, the square root will cancel. So the square root of three squared is just three. So we'd have x minus one, and then we'd have y plus four squared. So we're down to number four and number five, and then equals three. So this is number five. Next one um, is going to be x minus 1 squared again. And then this time we have y minus 4 squared. So y minus the y coordinate. And then equals the square root of 3 squared. And the square root of 3 squared again is just 3. So this time we have the x minus 1, y minus 4 squared, and then equals 3. So that's number 3. Um, and then D, we know that we are subtracting 0 from the Y, so we'll just have the Y squared, so that's going to be number 1. And you can write it out if you would like, but it's going to be X minus the X coordinate, so X minus 1 squared, and then Y minus 0 squared, and then equals 3 squared, which is 9. So then that leaves number 4 left over for E. Number two, write an equation for a circle centered at x, or sorry, negative 3, 2, and then a radius of 5. So we, again, will have x minus the x coordinate squared, and then y minus the y coordinate squared equals that radius squared. So the x coordinate is negative 3, so this is going to turn to plus 3. And then the y coordinate is 2 and our radius is five. So we're gonna have x um, plus three squared. So that rules out a and c. y minus two squared, and then five squared is 25. So d would be our equation there. Number three, plot this these two circles on the same coordinate plane. Then we're gonna do um, the image of them under a transformation, and then we're going to um, take a look at a couple of things. So let's get a coordinate system here. And um, so this first one has a center of 0, 0, because we're doing x minus 0 and y minus 0. Then our r squared is 4, so the r here is 2. So this is going to be a circle centered at 0, 0. And then the radius is going to go out to 2. So let me um, get this circle on here. I'll make it purple. So we're going to be centered at 0, 0, and it's going to go out to 2. So if you're plotting this, you could do a point at 2, up 2, left 2, down 2, and then draw your circle. Now the other circle is centered at 0, 0 again, um, but this one has a radius of 1 because the square root of 1 is 1. So that's going to be this circle right here. So again, this one is centered at 0, 0. Your r squared is 1 and the square root of 1 is 1. 
So now let's find the image of any point on this um, circle here, on the first circle, the purple circle, under a transformation of half of the X and half of the Y. So let's take um, any ordered pair that we see on here. So let's do this one, because this one's going to be a pretty easy one at 0, 2. So now if we take and do half of each of those, so half of the X is going to be 0, and half of 2 is 1, that point's going to be right here. So then if we took a look at this point here, this is the point negative 2, 0. Well, half of negative 2 is negative 1, and half of 0 is 0, so that's going to be here. If we did this one, it would be here. If we did this one, it would be here. So what do we notice about these two circles is that this one is just a dilation of the first. So a dilation of, I'm just going to say, the purple one um, by a scale factor of 1 half. So this green one is half the size of the purple one. Number four, follow this rule that x, y is going to map to x minus 3 and then 4 minus y. So that's an example of a transformation called a glide reflection. Complete the table using the rule. Okay, so then we're going to take the x and we're going to subtract 3 from it. So 1 minus 3 gave us that negative 2. Then um, for the y, we're going to do 4 minus the y-coordinate. So 4 minus 1 gave us 3. So we're going to do that for each of these um, next two ordered pairs. So for the x, we're going to subtract 3. So 6 minus 3 is 3. And then down here, 3 minus 3 is 0. Then we're going to do 4 minus the y-coordinate. So 4 minus 1 is 3. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. And then does this glide, glide reflection produce a triangle congruent to the original? So I don't have a piece of graph paper on here, but let me just plot this. Um, so 1, 1, and then 6, 1, and then um, 3, 5. So that's going to be this triangle. And we know, so these were both at a height of 1, so this is 5 wide. Okay, and then if I kind of take a look at this, so from um, 3, 5, from 6, 1 to 3, 5, this was like up um, 4. So 1 to 5 is up 4, and then 6 to 3 is over 3. And if I did the Pythagorean theorem quick here, this would be 5. So let's take a look at plotting the other one. And so this one's going to be at negative 2, 3. Th um, and then at 3, 3. And then at 0, negative 1. So this one, again, um, the distance here was 5. Okay, and if we took a look at these other ones and we calculated um, this movement here, we'd get 4 and 3 again to get 5. So we end up with these equilateral triangles. So they are congruent um, if you plotted that on graph paper. Number five, the triangle whose vertices are 1, 1, 5, 3, and 4, 5 is transformed by this rule where we triple the X and we triple the Y. Is the image similar or congruent to the original figure? When we multiply, that means it's going to be similar because this is a dilation. So we're producing a larger triangle, so not the same size, but we're producing a larger triangle at the same scale since we're multiplying both the X and Y by 3. So it's going to be similar to the original. If these two were different numbers, then it'd be neither. Number six, match each coordinate to the rule, match each coordinate rule to the description. Um, and so... Let's take a look here. So this is that one we just looked at, which is a dilation by a factor of three. So let's look for the word um, dilation. So down here, number seven, dilate using the origin as the center by a scale factor of three. So that is this A. 
So letter A goes with number seven. Um, this one is just subtracting three from each. So that's going to be a translation from zero, zero to negative three, negative three. So zero, zero to negative three, negative three. That's number six. This one is going to be 0, 0 to 3, 3 because we're just adding 3. So you kind of think about plugging 0, 0 in. And if we do 0 plus 3, that's 3. And then 0 plus 3 is 3. That gives you the two coordinates. So 0, 0 to 3, 3 is number 5. Next one um, will be to negative 3, 0. So 0, 0 to negative 3, 0. So that's number 1. Then um, this next one, zero, zero, will go to three, zero. So then three, zero is number three. Then we'll get um, to zero, negative three. So zero, negative three is number two. And then that leaves number four left over for G, zero, three. Number seven, a cone-shaped container is oriented with its circular base um, on the top and its apex on the bottom. So like this. Um, it has a radius of 18 inches. So the radius here is 18 inches and then a height of six inches. If the cone starts filling up with water, what fraction of the volume is the cone um, of the cone is filled when the water reaches a height of two inches. So if we're talking this way, okay, so if we're talking here, when we get to two inches, what portion of the volume is filled? Um, and so when we're talking volume, we're talking K cubed, right? So then this is um, two, two versus six. So two versus six is one third of the height. And then when we're talking volume, we would want to cube this to find the portion of the volume. So if the length or the scale factor is at one third, then the volume factor is going to be at 127th of its volume.